Hey guys, it's Krista Watson here from Krista Quilts, and I'm super excited to tell you that I just finished the turquoise version of my ticker tape quilt. I actually made this quilt in two different color schemes, one with this fun aqua blue fabric as the background, and another with the navy. Both of them were made for my Dazzle Dots fabric, and they were both made in different sizes. So in just a minute, I'm gonna tell you how I quilted both of them using two different quilting plans. So for this ticker tape quilt, it's super easy to choose colors. Just grab your favorite pre-cut strips. They're known by many names, strippies or jelly rolls or strip rolls. They're two and a half inch strips and they're pre-cut. And all you have to do is pair them up with some contrasting background fabric. And of course, follow the pattern. The pattern itself comes in multiple sizes. So I thought it was super fun to make two different sizes two different color schemes, two different quilting plans, because you know me, I love making the same quilt more than once just to see what it looks like. So now let's take a look and I will share some bonus tips and tricks and how I quilted them both very differently, but I think they turned out great. So when I designed Ticker Tape and my Dazzle Dots collection, I wanted to make sure that you could use any background that you wanted and you would just pull out the duplicate strips in the strip pack so that that fabric would not show up in the blocks. Once you know which fabrics you're using, you can follow the pattern directions to cut out all the individual units that you need for each block. The other choice you can decide is whether or not you want each block to have different fabrics like I did in the turquoise version, or if you want each block to only have three different fabrics plus the background. They both end up looking great. Here's a little bit of video showing me sewing the blocks together. A little bonus tip is that if you sew with the background fabric on the top each time, that will automatically reverse the sewing direction so that your blocks are less likely to warp out of shape. So now I'm sewing together the pieces with the navy fabric. It's very similar for the turquoise version as well. And of course I like to chain piece, which means I will stitch units together without clipping threads in between each piece. That makes the whole process go a lot faster. My navy version is a lot smaller, so I put up the blocks on the design wall. And here's how you can see how those blocks each use the same fabric in each part of the row. I press my seams open throughout the entire quilt so that the quilt would lie much flatter. Now you'll notice that I'm sewing together the pieces for the turquoise version. It's the exact same process, but of course here I've made it a little bit more scrappy and I've mixed up the fabrics in each block. Again, I'm using that chain piecing and I'm trying to sew with the background fabric on top as much as possible. I didn't really have to use pins and I just cut accurately so everything lines up nice and straight. Uh, here's my yummy stack of turquoise blocks. And again, you can see how each block is a little bit more scrappy and how I press those seams open. Now, if you do wanna press your seams open, my number one tip for that is to sew with the shorter stitch length, 2.0 instead of 2.5, and that's going to add more thread to your blocks and it's gonna lock those seams so that you don't even see any thread peeking through the seams. My turquoise version is larger, so it takes up more room on my design wall. Now here's how I pin it together with my seams pressed open. First of all, I line up the little middle sections where I want them to line up precisely and I check it to make sure it all looks good. Then I place a couple of pins perpendicular to where those joins are. This is so that I can pull out the pins as I'm sewing together with my accurate quarter inch seam. Now I'm not pinning through the middle of the seam, I'm pinning on the left and the right side of each seam so that it's not gonna split those seams apart. And trust me, when you're sewing together those tiny seams with the tiny stitch length, it's really gonna stitch together nicely. And then you can see how my points really did line up nicely. Now I sewed some of this quilt top at home and then I actually took the rest on vacation. So I actually stitched it together using two different sewing machines, my Bernina and then also my fun little Singer Featherweight. I don't know about you, but sewing next to the beach sure is my happy place. Then when I got back home, it was time to baste it. 
You can see how large the turquoise quilt top is. Right now it's just a flimsy, but once I quilt it, it'll be a finished quilt. I like to take a picture with the batting that I'm using. I used a silk batting mostly as an experiment and it turned out really nicely. Now I didn't get a full video of me basting the quilt, but basically what I do is I spray the wrong side of the quilt top and the quilt back and I do that outside. Then I assemble all three of the layers on my design wall. So once it's ready to go, then I iron both sides of the basted quilt top to set the glue. So we can kind of watch me doing that for a little while. Again, this quilt is very large, so it took a little bit of time to put it together. If you'd like to check out my complete spray basting process, check out the links to my other YouTube videos. But basically what I have is a big board that sits on top of my ironing board and I'm using a hot dry iron without any steam to work out the wrinkles and set the glue and kind of mush everything together. So I iron the complete back side of the quilt first and then I iron the front side. Now the basting spray that I use is 505 and it's not like super glue. It will come apart but basting and ironing it like this will keep the quilt together while I scrunch and smush it under the machine and I don't have to use any pins. When I'm doing a large quilt like this, I just do part of it at a time and then I just move it on down the ironing board and it ends up working really, really great. The next thing I do is I make a quilting plan. So I'm gonna rotate the quilt 90 degrees so that I can stitch a line from top to bottom using my walking foot. So about every three or four rows, I'm going to stitch a line in the ditch or on top of the ditch with my walking foot. Once I get to the middle of the quilt, I'm gonna rotate it and then I'm gonna keep on going until every single line, maybe about six to eight to 10 inches apart have been stitched and that's gonna secure the quilt. Then I'm gonna go back later and I'm gonna fill in the areas with more stitching. This turquoise version is completely quilted with a walking foot. But I wanna tell you right now, it's always okay to change up your plan because as I show you right now, the plan I'm gonna do, I actually changed it up a little bit when it came time to quilting it. Now in the quilting plan, my original idea was just to quilt some decorative stitches all the way across the quilt. But as I'm gonna show you in a few minutes, I ended up changing that plan and I did decorative stitches on half of the quilt and then wavy lines on the other half of the quilt. I picked a coordinating thread, I picked a turquoise thread from my Piece and Quilt Colors collection and I'm using that for the top and bobbin. For my walking foot quilting, I am lowering the presser foot pressure and my feed dogs are engaged. I'm also slightly reducing the tension so that I make a good stitch. And on my machine, I'm using the number 16, which is kind of like a broken zigzag or a running stitch. And I have increased my stitch width to 6.0 and my length to 2.0. This is gonna give me a nice looking zigzag that has a lot of stitches each time. All right, now for the fun part, I'm ready to start stitching. So again, my feed dogs are engaged and I have this decorative stitch selected. Now, this is called walking foot quilting, but I'm actually using the integrated Bernina dual feed because it will allow me to make a wider zigzag stitch, but it works just like a walking foot, pulling the layers through evenly. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm stitching this decorative stitch, not in the ditch, but on top of the ditch. And I'm just going to go all the way across the quilt about every, like I said, about every six to eight rows to anchor and secure it. Now here's a close up detail of what that looks like. I'm eyeballing, I'm not marking anything, and I'm making sure that the area in between my hands is nice and flat. Now I'm wearing my quilting gloves because that's gonna give me a better grip on the quilt and it's going to allow me to push the quilt smoothly underneath the machine. You can kind of see those zigzags after I've stitched them. I'm starting at the top and I'm moving towards the bottom. Then I'm cutting thread with each row. Now, when I get to the end of the row that I'm stitching and once I'm about halfway across the quilt, I'm gonna cut thread and then I'm going to rotate the quilt underneath the machine or underneath the needle and I'm gonna continue going from the middle to the right. So you can kind of notice that the area off to my left has been stitched. And now I'm working my way from the middle back to the right hand side. 
So I start on the right hand side of the quilt rather than in the middle because it allows me to deal with the bulk a lot easier rather than shoving the quilt all under the machine at one time. And I'm just letting the feed dogs pull the quilt through the machine. Basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep the area flat and I'm just letting the machine do the work while my hands give it a little push under the machine. So I'm starting stitching off the batting. I only have a little bit of batting and backing stitching out and I'm starting a fresh new row each time. By starting stitching in the batting, that's going to catch my extra threads and that can get trimmed away later. And I don't leave a lot of batting sticking out because I don't want it to fold underneath the quilt. With my spray basting process, I don't need a lot of extra room around the quilt. So I'm just going to keep on stitching, feeling in with those decorative stitches. Okay, once those major seam areas were quilted, about every six to eight rows, now I'm going back and I'm stitching all the vertical rows. So because these are two inch finished strips, I'm stitching lines every two inches across the quilt. So this is gonna take a little bit more time, but I don't have to worry about the quilt flapping. I don't have to worry about it getting bunched or puckered because those anchor lines really held it together. So once I reach the end of each row, I cut thread and I pull the quilt back and I work on the next row. Again, I'm working right to the center, rotating, and then working again from the center back to the right hand side, feeling in every single two inches. So here's a close up detail of what that zigzag stitch looks like stitched in the ditch every two inches apart. Once I stitched all of the major seam lines two inches apart, I decided that I wanted to fill in every other row with more dense zigzag stitching. So now all I did is I just went back and I added another row of stitching on the left hand side of this row, basically using the edge of my foot as a guideline. Once that row is done, I stitched another row on the right hand side, again, putting the edge of my foot very close to my previous line of stitching. So basically I have four rows stitched in this one section. Once I've stitched those additional rows, I'm going back and I'm doing the same thing again, adding a line of stitching on the left hand side, all the way down and across the quilt, and then another line of stitching on the right hand side. So if you count how much stitching, I've got the two ditch lines, plus four lines in between each of the ditch lines. So I do the ditch lines first, and then I went back and I added four more rows of stitching in every single section. You can see a little bit of a close up here. Here's a wider view of what it looks like. I'm working on my Krista cabinet, which gives me a lot of room to hold up the quilt on my left hand side and in front of me. And you'll notice as I push the quilt under the machine, those wonderful quilt catchers are blocking the quilt so it doesn't fall off the edges. This basically prevents friction and drag on the quilt, which is what happens when the quilt's falling off all over the place and it makes your stitches not look so good. So by having this nice workspace, it makes for a really nice and comfortable machine quilting experience. So this is pretty much what it looks like the entire time I'm quilting. Now, if you were to start and quilt lines very, very close together to start with, it would really get tedious very quickly. But by spreading out the density of the quilting and making my lines more narrow and more narrow with each pass across the quilt, that allows me to evenly distribute the bulk of the quilting across the quilt, and it allows me to change my mind if I want to, which I ended up doing in this quilt. Now, once I finished quilting the zigzag decorative stitches in every other row, I decided it would look more interesting if I changed up the alternate rows and did a different pattern. So I'm still quilting with my dual feed and I'm still have my feed dogs engaged, but now I've switched to just a regular straight stitch and I'm wiggling the quilt from side to side. Now on the zigzags, I added four rows of zigzags and with the straight lines, I'm stitching in every other row in between those zigzags. However, I ended up stitching seven rows of wiggly lines because they didn't take up as much bulk. I probably could have gotten away with stitching five rows or maybe six rows, but I really, really liked the density. Now, I know what some of you guys are saying. You might be thinking, oh, you could have done that with a wavy line stitch. You could, but it would look completely different. So basically what I'm doing is I'm quilting on the left hand side of that row 
on the right hand side of that row, left and right and center until I stitched seven more lines in each of those little areas. Now I really love quilting my quilts densely and the trick is if you use natural fiber materials that are soft and breathable, the quilt is gonna be nice and cuddly no matter how densely you quilt it. You can see how the more quilting that I add to the quilt, that thread really just tends to blend in. It makes it really yummy and textural and soft and cuddly. I really like how this turned out using the zigzags and the wavy lines, and I think that was a good combination. Because I had used that decorative zigzag on a half of the quilt, and I was in a hurry to finish, I decided to machine bind my quilt. Again, make sure you check out my other videos for a full tutorial on that. But basically what I did is I attached my binding, and then to finish it off, I used that same decorative zigzag stitch on the binding so that the binding became a decorative element on the quilt. I'm using a stiletto and wonder clips to kind of hold everything in place. Here's the detail of what that looked like. Again, just more texture on the quilt. You can take a look at the pattern where I've included details of how I quilted the navy version because that one was finished before I finished up the pattern. The quilt pattern itself is full color as you can see with lots of different options and different layouts and a place where you can even make a quilting plan and try out different machine quilting ideas. So what I decided to do in the navy version is in every other row, I still quilted a different design. In the background areas, I quilted these really fun loop-de-loops using free motion techniques. So while I stitch, I'll kind of tell you how I did it. So I switched to my free motion foot. In this case, I tried out my stitch regulator, but you can see that whenever it's beeping at me with that red light, I'm going too fast. So I actually kind of prefer to stitch without the regulator, but every now and then I like to still play around with it. So basically what I'm doing is I'm stitching loops and I'm switching the direction each time. Now I was using a very matching thread, so you're not necessarily seeing a lot of stitching, but you can kind of follow my movements as I go. When I finish one section of the blue, it's very easy to just jog over in the seam to get to the next section of blue. Now what I'm not doing is I'm not counting the number of loops and I'm not making them all the same size. I'm just trying to eyeball the space in between the piecing to figure out how big the loops need to be. And if I need to add a little small loop at the end, that's not a big deal. I just add as many loops as I need to to keep on going. Now, if I wanna jog over to the next part of the quilt, all I have to do is stitch in the ditch in the seam to kind of get to where I need to go and I can make this a continuous pattern. It's a very fun methodical process and what you can do is you can draw out your design on paper first, then practice on a little sample to make sure that you have a feel for how it's gonna go. So basically I'm quilting loops in the major areas where those long blue rectangles are. Now I'm gonna quilt a different design in the small blue squares that's next to the more colorful pieces. I'm just quilting these loops in the long blue rectangles. And again, you can see when I need to get to the next area of blue, I just kind of take it slow, move over in the seam, and I keep on going. So I can do several rows of this design all at the same time without having to cut thread. Now, in the rest of the quilt where I have the printy areas, I have gone back with free motion quilting and I have stitched some wavy X's. I didn't take video while I quilted it, but it's very simple design and you can see a close-up of that in the pattern. All the way across one way and then coming back the other way. Now in the finished quilt, you can see how the colors are a little bit more organized and how it's a much smaller quilt, but it's still soft and cuddly. So whether or not you wanna do the navy version or the turquoise version or any other colorway for that matter, you get to choose your own colors, fabrics, and quilting plan. Well, I hope you enjoyed a little bit more behind the scenes as I made both versions of my ticker tape quilt pattern. You can grab the pattern, you can grab the Dazzle Dots fabrics, you can grab your own pre-cut strips, you can make it super scrappy. It's up to you. As long as you're having fun, I'm happy to be your cheerleader every step of the way. Until next time, happy quilting. Mm -hmm.